good morning everyone so i'll discuss the indications and composition of total parental nutrition the laminar flow and uh, the type of laminar flow that we are using precautions and aseptic uh, methods uh, while preparation of tpn and the apps that we use so as compared to preterm neonates the term neonates rapidly adapt from a uh, relatively constant intrauterine supply from uh, intrauterine life to intermittent feeding of milk preterm neonates due to reserves uh, are lesser limited nutrient reserves limited metabolic pathways and increased demands are more uh, late in adaptation of feeding tpn uh, at our unit we start total parental nutrition in all preterm neonates who are less than 28 weeks or less than 1 kg birth weight or the neonates which are having surgical conditions like bowel atresia post op baby cdh or any baby who is in sepsis shock requiring inotropes or nec so at our sgpgi unit uh, we have a pn facility with a dedicated tpn room which is located away from the nicu of size about 140 square feet a laminar flow system with a computer with printed for tpn charts a refrigerator for different infusion pumps and uh, nutrient solutions and disposable and scrub linens so this is our nicu our tpn room is uh, located away it is a clutter free room containing only the laminar flow of size of 140 square feet this is our uh, laminar flow from optimair esco brand so our daily routine is that just prior to rounds uh, the tpn trolley is prepared containing the scrub linens disposable sheets the solutions for asepsis precautions the uh, disposable syringes aminovin lipid solutions they are being raised from the hrf uh, by the morning staff of the allotted babies prior to rounds uh, the laminar flow is being cleaned which i'll discuss in the following slides and then the solutions are being kept in the laminar flow uh, for 30 minutes in the uv radiation and after the rounds and the daily chart uh, preparation one resident and a allotted staff nurse in the daily roster prepares the tpn most of the times the half of percent of uh, total parental nutrition is uh, by the carbohydrates that gives dextrose 30% is by the lipids and next uh, 10 to 15% is by the proteins so we start with uh, 60 ml per kg in babies uh, more than 34 weeks or more than 1500 g birth weight and 80 ml per kg in less than 1500 g birth weight babies daily urine output uh, electrolytes and weight loss or weight gain is assessed and then uh, further increments are being made uh, based on that so if uh, the dextrose composition is less than 12.5 uh, we use mostly the peripheral lines and if it is more than 12.5 or higher osmolar uh, fluid then we use central lines the formula for calculation is a uh, percent of dextrose into per ml per kg per day divided by 144 in preterm babies we start with a bit higher uh, gir that is a uh, 4 to 8 and in term babies we start with 4 mg per kg per minute daily increments of 1 to 2 mg per kg per minute are made and maximum of till uh, 12 mg per kg per minute gir is being given so apart from uh, calculating from the tpn chart or from the apps uh, we calculate manually from 25% dextrose and 10% dextrose assessing the amount of uh, percent dextrose that we need and then crossing uh, its composition this is a formula for assessing life if we want to prepare a 12.5% dextrose we subtract it from a uh, 25 this comes 12.5 and a uh, 12.5 minus 10 comes 2.5 so this comes in a 1 is to 5 ratio so if we take one part of 25% dextrose then five parts of uh, 10d are being taken from the whole amount of dextrose uh, let me use i use uh, Convertible each of MTO lens bean oil, which provides a basic essential fatty acids and high source of energy. So these are the components that we uh, lips of that twenty uh, percent come at a price of three sixty rupees per hundred ml. Bean oil is ten percent, or which is approximately uh, three forty six rupees per hundred. Ten percent, five percent, twenty-five percent, fifty percent dextrose or uh, what else we use to make a uh, dextrose composition, and the electrolytes uh, we'll further discuss. We start with sodium of zero uh, to three in first uh, two days of life, 
and then we increase to maximum of three to six MEQ per kg per day. The sodium com, uh, content that we use is three percent injection, uh, uh, three percent saline. For potassium, we start with zero to two milliequivalents, and then we increase it further to three MEQ per kg per day. For potassium, uh, if we are giving it to preterm babies, we use injection pot force uh, so that uh, we give phosphorus also to the baby to prevent osteopenia of prematurity. And in term babies, we use uh, KCL in IV fluid. The pot force injection is being added uh, in aminobin so that it does not precipitate with calcium in the IV fluids. For calcium, we use 10% injection calcium gluconate at the dose of 150 to 200 mg per kg per day. 50% magnesium sulfate injection is being given at 0.1 ml per kg per day. And phosphate is provided by the pot force solution. So this is the pot for solution, but uh, care should be taken to assess the potassium levels also just uh, giving prior to this. And because one ml of pot force gives 4.4 milliequivalents of potassium, three moles of phosphorus. The patient we uh, is already discussed, the protein we use is 10%, small 20%, 3% uh, in sodium chloride for sodium and 10% uh, MPI, we use adult MBI solution because we don't have pediatric MBI solutions. As it's been already discussed, that uh, the limitation with adult MBI is it lacks a well ascorbic acid. But despite all that, uh, we try to initially nutrition. For this, we do oral application of colostrum every two hourly, initiate non nutritive sucking once the baby is stable, and initiate early feeding if the baby is. Um, able to take the base elements we use uh, two injections uh, both are uh, in our hrf injection salicyl or injection otski this comes at a price of 100 rupees per vial this provides uh, chromium copper selenium and uh, zinc at 1 mg per vial to prepare tpn first of all uh, these are the steps patient identification daily tpn charts are being printed uh, uh, with a set performer, the name, weight, present weight, birth weight, CR number is being uh, depicted on the daily chart. Then after the rounds, uh, the daily requirement is planned. Calculation of uh, TPN is done by two methods at our unit, both by manual using our chart and uh, both uh, other by the Excel, TPN Excel performer. That is the software which is there in our nursing station desktop. Uh, then the PN preparation and then administration. So to prepare the first step is calculation, then the preparation and administration, which involves both priming of the tubings and then connecting, maintaining the line care. Manually, we do by TPN charts, uh, as I've discussed that uh, the birth weight is used for calculation till it is regained. And after that, the daily weight is used for calculations of drugs. So this is our TPN chart, which we use, uh, daily TPN chart that we use. This contains the total fluid intake uh, at what ml per kg per day are we trying? We mark this whole volume here. From this whole volume, the feed amount, the drugs volume, the inotrope volume, all the infusions, antibiotics are being subtracted from this volume. This is the fat uh, at what gram per kg per day we are trying. In all our volumes, we uh, multiply this factor by 1.2 because this is the amount, extra amount that we need to prime up the tubings. So we divide uh, the volume by 24 as per the original value, but we take extra 1.2% in every amino bin lipid and electrolytes level. At the end, after subtracting all the uh, volumes, the dextrose concentration is assessed and uh, using the 25% or 10% dextrose, the uh, required dextrose volume is uh, written. So for example, we have this TPN chart of a baby with 3 kg birth weight and planning to give a total fluid intake of 150 ml per kg per day. So this volume comes out 450 ml per day. In uh, this 450 ml, we try to subtract all the antibiotic infusions, uh, feed volumes, and then this volume comes at 368. Then in the next step, we tried, uh, uh, this is the amino bin we are giving at 3 gram per kg per day. So this volume comes, uh, suppose it comes at... Uh, uh, 78 ml with 78 ml into 1.2 percent will uh, right hit 90 ml so that the extra amount remains in the tubing and it is used for uh, removing the dead space of the tubing 
After this, the electrolytes, we use 3% injection uh, NaCl. So if we are using 3% and we are giving it 3 MEQ per kg per day, then this uh, comes at 3 into 3 into 2. This is a factor when we are using 3% NaCl. If we are using a 0.9% NaCl, then we uh, use the factor uh, 1. So for potassium, if we are using at 2 MEQ per kg, we divide it by half. If we are using calcium, uh, 2 ml per kg per day, then we uh, keep it as same 2 into 3. MgSO4 is added at 0.1 ml per kg per day. Phosphorus is uh, added seeing the potassium values. And after subtracting all the values, the dextrose composition is prepared by 25% dextrose and 10% dextrose. Apart from this, uh, we can prepare from 5%, 50% also. Uh, this is our TPN uh, calculation Excel. Uh, the first column contains, we need to enter only the first column things. Apart from this, uh, all the other columns, the Excel sheet provides us. We need to enter the weight, the TFI, amount of feed volume at what we are trying to start 15 uh, uh, every two hourly, lipid at one, amino min at one. And all the things that we enter here, this gives us the total uh, volume, the osmolarity and the volume rate also. Discuss our laminar flow. Oh, I've discussed this is our optimal laminar flow. So preparation includes, uh, we have daily CSSD uh, trays uh, for the prior uh, preparation that are uh, coming daily at uh, around 8 a.m. And we start TPN trolley preparation at around 9 to 10 a.m. Just uh, prior to uh, preparation, we clean uh, this uh, laminar flow. The stainless steel part is being cleaned with 70% isopropyl alcohol, whereas the glass of the laminar flow is being cleaned with the soap solution. So Cleaning is done from back to front and uh, up to down. So after cleaning this with alcohol, uh, we start uh, on this uh, monitor while, uh, on this monitor, we start the UV radiation for 30 to 45 minutes of maximum. So when we start this UV radiation, the caution should be taken to that the glass is uh, closed. If the glass is not closed, then UV radiation will not work. And prior uh, to preparation of TPN, this can be switched on. And then the room should be closed. Uh, the UV radiation are carcinogenic. So the there should be uh, no one in the room and room should be closed for this. Apart from uh, this UV radiation button, we have this fan button also, the light button, which is uh, during the preparation. Automatic versus uh, manual preparation, we both uh, do. There are two persons needed, one senior resident and one allotted staff nurse. Uh, they prepare under the laminar flow with uh, surgical asepsis. And the solution is prepared for next 24 hours. And uh, next morning, other TPN is prepared. If the TPN is uh, prepared uh, afterwards, like in uh, afternoon sessions, then we can store it in refrigerator. But once prepared, we do not add further things in the TPN bag. So these are the steps. We have a different hand wash area in our uh, TPN room. Uh, the staff nurse adorns with surgical asepsis. The cleaning of vials after UV radiation also for 30 minutes. Uh, we clean the vials from top to bottom. Whole vials are cleaned with spirit beater in spirit with ANTT technique. And then the preparation into 50, 60 ml and the desired amount of syringes is being Labeling is done uh, for each baby on the syringes. The amino bin and uh, potphos is taken into one syringe. MVIs and lipids, because they are photooxidative and covered with aluminum foils, they are taken in another syringes. This is the final uh, TPN preparation. So before connecting to patients, we prime up the tubings and we use the three-way connectors. Aluminum foil coating of lipid syringes is done. Uh, we do not interrupt for medications and try to avoid from giving line where inotropes are being given and infusion pumps are used for the same. Daily, the tubings are changed and the drip sets are also changed. For maintaining strict uh, asepsis, line care is done. Uh, we label and cover with gauge piece all the entry points. Uh, IV filters are being used at our unit. They come at a price of around 250 rupees per filter. These filters, when they change the color, uh, they need to be changed. 
And apart from it, if the, uh, this filter do not change the color, we need to change it every 48 hourly. So these are the stickers that we paste on the filter on what day it needs to be changed. Multi-clev, uh, all the needleless connectors we have uh, comes at a price of 300 rupees. These are the uh, needleless connectors that we attach uh, at the hub of line. So during uh, preparation in one syringe, we have uh, taken amino wind dextrose and electrolytes. In another photoprotected syringe, we have taken lipid and MVI. Uh, we can give it uh, through both peripheral line or central line. Mostly if it is for shorter duration, we use peripheral line uh, or low or smaller solutions we give from peripheral route. Care should be taken to uh, see the osmolarity of solutions. The high osmolar solutions are mostly uh, like more than a uh, thousand milliosmoles per liter. They are mostly the soda bicarb solutions, 50% dextrose and a 3% injection, 3% uh, chloride solution. During the TPN, uh, the monitoring, uh, just prior to starting of TPN, we measure the serum triglyceride levels and then measure it once weekly. Daily electrolyte should be monitored and frequent changes uh, in the composition should be made. The calcium, magnesium and phosphorus should be measured every bi-weekly. Um, these are the apps that we use. Mostly we use the Neonate AI app and the DexCal app uh, to calculate the GIRs. And uh, while doing the Excel sheet TPN, uh, we mostly do not require these apps, but further, Kimaya and DexCal are the ones that we use mostly. So take home message is, uh, Total parental nutrition is essential part in cases of preterm babies, uh, but we try to start and initiate early enteral nutrition as soon as possible. Early aggressive nutrition should be started in those babies who are eligible for it. The prescription should be according to the age and clinical condition depicting the daily weight loss or weight gain. The labeling should be correct. And monitoring during the total parental nutrition is the key to successful therapy and to manage the complications of electrolyte disbalance, if any. These were my references. I acknowledge all the neonates, uh, our HOD ma'am, and all the consultants, our residents, and all the sister departments. Thank you.